I'm Atuba George, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, today is Friday. <laughs> Praise God. Hey, are you ready for the word of God? Now, now, tomorrow is the last day of the month of November. Tomorrow is November 30th. Now, remember, every end of the month and into the first day of the month, we normally have our 24 hours fasting and praying according to the watches. I want to invite you for tomorrow's or December edition. You, you, you see, God is doing a lot with this, this prayer meetings that we hold. We, we actually start by 12 midnight. So tomorrow, not, not tonight, now tomorrow, 30th, breaking into the first at 12 midnight, we begin the first prayer meeting. And then we, we pray at every three hours. Okay. That's what we call praying according to the watches. So at 12 midnight, we pray. At 3 a.m., we pray. At 9 a.m., 6 a.m., we pray. 9 a.m., we pray. 12 noon, we pray. 3 p.m., we pray. 6 p.m., we pray. And then the last prayer meeting is by 9 p.m. Because that begins the last watch for the day, which is the first. Now, the Lord gave us this instruction a few years ago. If you will hallow. You see, make that day as a first fruit unto the Lord. Then God is going to sanctify the whole month for you. And when we've been receiving testimonies of God's grace, God's supernatural blessings. And I believe God will do wonders in the month of December and prepare you greatly for the month, for the year coming, 2025. I told you, these three years... 2025, 2026, 2027. They are going to be amazing years. And when I say amazing, don't take that as amazing. <laughs> it's good. They are years that the Spirit of God is going to move in a unique direction. And my prayer for you is that you have ears that hear and eyes that see more than ever before. Because things are going to happen so fast. There are people that are going to be better. There are people that are going to be swallowed up in nations. Yeah, in nations. And also in the church. These three years, there are people who will not survive it. Yet there are voices that God is going to be amplifying. Just sudden voices. But they are not sudden. They've been waiting on the Lord. Okay? But then suddenly the God, and the kind of voices we're going to be hearing within these three years, are the voices that are connected to the end time. They are witnesses and they, are, they will come with such a force. Now their force will not be connected to any man. Their force will not be connected to any organization. They will just show up with a force. And they are, they are all backed up by the Spirit of God. And they will take the world by storm, fulfill the word of the Lord. Now if you don't know the word of the Lord, you will not understand them. So Jesus is going to be doing a purification within the next three years. Okay. And how is he going to do the work of purification? By his word. By his word. So you're going to see the greatest amount of falling away also. I'm telling you what 2025 upward is going to begin to look like. Then also, you're going to be seeing changes in the nations. There's, there's a realignment that will begin to take place among the nations. Lots of governments are going to be changed within these three years. You, you'll see some by uprising, okay? Some's going to be by uprising, like um, riot and demonstration. Governments will be changed. Some by death, some by different means but but when, once we enter 2025 governments will begin to shake now i can tell you exactly what god is going to be doing but maybe not not now but please understand this god there is there is a a walking that will truly start from the church and when that move starts from the church, the earth will begin to readjust and realign. 
There's a repentance that must come from the church. The moment that repentance comes, the earth will begin to realign and readjust. The moment the earth begins to readjust, now that's what's going to cause a falling away. Okay? Everything that is false that the earth have been supporting, every leaning on the earth that is false will give way. So governments who were not instituted by God, are you following me now? Governments that were not instituted by God, people who forced themselves to be president of nations, to be kings of kingdoms, people who killed, who cheated their way, and, and, and the earth assisted them. Okay? Yes. Suddenly, that thing that they are leaning on will begin to give way. I'm telling you what the Spirit of God is showing. I'm telling you what the Spirit of God is saying. 2025, 2026, 2027. It's going to happen in, not just in the church. It will begin from the church. A repentance is going to come forth from the church. Then the earth will begin to realign, readjust. And when that readjustment takes place, it will begin to affect the nations. It will begin to affect kingdoms. Kingdoms will be given, will be, will be broken, will be split. Kings will die. And when they die, the sign that their death was not normal is that not even their lineage will take over. But you will be shocked that by the time the one who is to take over, take over, when you do the tracing, you realize that in be previously before now, the stool was stolen from another lineage, from the original lineage. So the earth will be returning it back to the original place. So also you're going to see lots of movements. Okay? There are people who have traveled out of this country. They'll be forced to come back. And there are people who are here. Now, you may say, yeah, but that's normal now. I'm telling you what is going to be happening. Then, for those who love the Lord, it's your season. Why? Because things that have you have been depraved from, things that have been stolen away from you, those things naturally will be restored to you. Yeah, <laughs> it's good. Things that have been taken away from you forcefully will suddenly be restored to you. Now, the earth itself is going to be carrying out these readjustments. Understand what I said. I didn't say God will be carrying out this. Now, God is behind the scene, but why is going to be quick and solid is because the earth itself will be doing the readjustments. <laughs> Praise God. Woo! Glory, 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 glory. I, I think that's how far I can share with you today. But, but during the prayer meeting, I, I'm trusting the Spirit of God tomorrow. Tomorrow night, throughout the first and every session of prayer, the Spirit of God will help us in you know, expand on some of these things and go into deeper, uh, deeper talk concerning them. Because most of those prayer times, I teach for thirty minutes, and then we we'll spend thirty minutes praying. Okay, praise God. So I invite you for that. Now, can we call for that daily bread? We have on praise God. Hey, everything that is owed you in this month of November. I pray you receive it within these two days. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Say with me, Father, I demand from you my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. This might be the last time we teach specifically like this on the spirit of boldness praise god so, so follow me closely and i'm trusting the holy ghost today verse 29 acts chapter 4 and now lord behold they are threatening and grant unto thy servant that with all boldness they may speak thy word god wants you out there speaking his word word not just speaking casually, speaking with boldness. And the Lord is granting you authority. 
Are you one of those God is planning to use in this coming season? Prepare your heart. Prepare your heart. There's no time to be sinning. There's no time to be toying around with civilian things. There's no time to be chasing money. Oh, we need money to preach the gospel. Yes, God provides. He has more than enough. Oh, yes, he has more than. If you're a child of God, you are about to witness what it is to be supplied by God. You see all this thing we declare, give us our daily bread. You are about to see the true manifestation of it. I'm telling you the truth. God is going to be doing great wonders. I can't so get excited if you're a child of God. Get excited if you're a tithe. Get excited, praise God. And those of you that have abandoned tithe because of what men have been telling you, repent. We can't be talking about the earth aligning and you're joking with tithe. Huh? Ah, Pastor, what are you talking about? All those things you're talking about. Uh, the blood of Jesus, okay. Okay, you will learn. By experience, you will learn. But I pray you don't learn the hard way. So, why don't you just simply obey the Lord? I always tell people this. Very simple. Go before the Lord. Take it fast. Lord, okay, this thing, this, this tightening thing, what, what really is your mind concerning you? There's no way you will seek God and He'll abandon you. He will tell you. Don't listen to men. Men don't know much. You should have known that by now. They don't know much. Either they are half-baked or they are looking at it from the wrong st standpoint. Uh, uh, concerning this titan issue, a lot of people who are against titan, they are not against it because they can say titan is bad. They are simply against it because of the wrong practices that men... So see, their eyes are not on Jesus where titan is, is, is where, regarding to titan. Their eyes are on men. So they tell you, People are just eating your tithe and toying and playing with you. Now, that's what they say. Why? Because they are looking at the people who are misusing the tithe. Instead of putting their eyes on Jesus and begin to ask themselves, why did God ask for the tithe? Why is Jesus the high priest after the order of Melchizedek? And that's the high priest, that, that's the priesthood that is in operation right now. Yes, that's the priesthood that is in operation right now. And you say we should stop tithing. You must be joking. <laughs> you must be joking. You know nothing. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> and, and, and God said in Hebrews, that, look, he was quoting the book of um, Psalms, quoting David. He said, thou art a priest after the order of Melchizedek. That's the priesthood that is in operation right now. And so Jesus is receiving our tithe. How is Jesus receiving our tithe? These are things you have to be bold about. Don't let anybody cheat you. How does Jesus receive our tithe? We give it to him. He's our life. We talk to him. He talks to us. So I bring my tithe to him. I say, dear Lord Jesus, here, here is your money. He, you are my high priest, Lord. And I tithe to you. That's how we tithe. We, we don't tithe take it to church like, like the other people do. And that's what they know. See, to the level of their knowledge, they are correct. But when you come to the place of truth, you realize that, okay, we need to adjust certain things. So now, I'm realizing, I need to give the title to the high priest myself. Because it is his money. It's not the church's money. So I take it to him. I say, Lord, you blessed me. And here is your portion. Thank you, Lord. Let, let, see, because he's the high priest over it. And when he sanctifies it, the earth responds. I can never get broke. It's impossible for me to get broke. I, I've tried it before. I've tried to make myself broke before. It didn't work. I'm telling you the truth. It didn't work. Why? Because I've got a high priest who is alive. And he receives his tithe from me. Praise God. And so what does he do with it? He tells me what to do. With it. He tells me where to deploy. It. He tells me who to give it to. So I take my tithe to the, to the high priest. I say, dear Lord, thank you. And this is your 10%. 
And when I worship him, I go quiet before him. I say, Lord, you know it's your money. You just tell me where you want it. And I'll take it there. And by the word of the Lord, he speaks. Oh, Pastor, so what if you don't hear him? Uh -huh. You can't be talking about you don't hear him now. Ah, uh -huh. You may not make heaven. No. See, if you don't hear God, you can't make heaven. You can't. Why? The voice of God is your wedding garment. Oh yes. The voice of God is our wedding garment. If you don't have yours on, sorry for you. I'm not saying sorry for you that you're condemned. Do something about it. That's what I mean. Wake up. Wake up. And it's the easiest way you can begin to hear from the Lord. Hold this money. Go before him. Say, Lord, I have your money. Oh. Lord, you know, hey, see your money. Can you tell me what to do? He will instruct you. He's the one that will now tell you, give it to that fellow. Give it to that neighbor of yours. Give it to that church. Give it to that evangelist. Give it to that widow. Give it to so-and-so. Give it to so-and-so. It is the high priest's job to do that and you obey him. When you obey him, you know he has received your time. Now, nobody can tell you otherwise. And don't deceive yourself. Can you allow the Spirit of God to guide you? And so you now become bold in this thing. That's you know, so what I was talking to him. He said, hey, you know, Pastor, I, this thing you said is true, but in my church, yeah, if, you, if you do that, they will suspend you because I'm a leader. If the pastor does not see my tithe, he, he will remove me from leadership position. You need boldness. <laughs> Praise God. Boldness. By what? Your results. Oh, your results. Let me just obey God. Let me just obey God. And incidentally, you'll be amazed if one, one day God will tell you, give it to your church. He knows where the funds are needed. See, now that's how we bring, we bring adjustments to the earth. Please understand this. Because now when we begin to tithe properly, okay? Now what happens? Naturally, misappropriation will stop or reduce to a great extent. Now you will find out that those who are truly serving God are having more resources to do it. Not because they go around begging people. Because more believers are submitting their finances to the Lord and the Lord is directing them on how to expend it. So now they are giving it to where it is needed. Now that pastor who needs one million naira, but nobody knows him, okay? Nobody he knows within his circle can give him one million naira. But he genuinely needs one million dollars. And then he's praying to the Lord. Say, Lord, you know, you know, we've got to sort out this thing. And God commands someone who lives nearby, but I've never been to that church. Why he's giving God glory. Lord, you have blessed me. All these 10 million dollars. So I have brought your one million dollars as your tithe. And, and while he's praying, the Lord say, you remember that church? You've been hearing them sing. Yeah, give it to them. Hmm? But, but I, I've never been there. Yes, I, I want you to give it to them. Okay, Lord, I will obey you. And then he takes it and he brings it and the pastor glorifies God. Now, that's true worship. Okay, true worship. He glorifies God and, and even the giver, when he hears that, do you know in praying to God and, and believing him for one million naira, now he sent you. We don't know you, you don't know us, but God sent you. Now, you just met your brothers. You just met your brother. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean leave your church and go and be a member of that church. But you just know that there are brethren in that church who are connected to heaven. Praise God. That's how we know ourselves. Praise God. Glory to God. I love, I love this. Now, I'm excited because this is what you're going to begin to see. And while that is taking place, we will starve the enemy. We will starve. Have the, nobody can deceive anybody right now because they hey, hey, bring your tithe to me okay thank you sir thank you sir no, oh no problem no nobody's gonna argue with you father you, you blessed me and so what do you want me to do with the tithe oh take it to over there oh thank you lord thank you are you 
up, man. I didn't see that. Oh, sorry. Um, God spoke to me. And, and, and I can I can God. So, oh, sorry, sir. Should I obey God or you? I, I heard God. He spoke to me. And guess what? When, when I actually got there, I realized they were having a prayer meeting for that exact amount. Really? Yeah. In fact, it was so great. I, I've never seen God move like that before. Right? Well, but did you know that? No, I didn't know that. It's quiet. <laughs> I'm telling you, God knows what he's doing. That's why we must be careful, careful, careful. Careful who we listen to. Careful who's dishing out instructions to you. Careful who's telling you what God is saying when God has not spoken. Careful who's using sorcery to trap you. Be careful. And I pray the Lord show you mercy. Praise God. I'm so excited. Listen, I'm so excited already concerning not just next month's December. Because next month we're going to be preparing massively. You will hear teachings that will stir you up. Because 2025, we're taking off. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We bless you, Father. Oh, your word is so true and so, so enlightening. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your great power that is made manifest in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. I'll see you next month. And remember, join us tomorrow night for an exciting time in God's presence. Amen. Bye-bye.